gonna give you the real deal. Things that your labor nurse wants you to have in your nurse bag. Things that your IBCLC, aka lactation consultant, that's me, I'm your lactation consultant right now, wants you to know. <laughs> My name is Brittany and you are watching A Dose of Nurse Bay. So thank you so much for joining me. Come on in, get cozy. I normally make videos on my channel about nursing, health and wellness, lifestyle. I'm a lactation consultant and I worked in labor and delivery um, as a registered nurse. So I like to make videos for my mommy sometimes and about breastfeeding and pretty much anything that I find beneficial and that can be uplifting. Um, this channel is meant to be a sisterhood. So if you like my videos, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you want to see more from me. And you can let me know down in the comments if there are topics that you would like for me to discuss in the future. Today, um, it is January 2nd while I'm recording this video, y'all. So happy new year. And I want to start off this new year with a video for my mommies, okay? My future mommy, should I say. This video is going to be talking about things that you need in your hospital bag. I know that you probably got a list from your doctor telling you what to bring. And yes, use that list as a general guide for um, how you want to pack. But I'm going to give you the real deal. Things that your labor nurse wants you to have in your nurse bag. Things that your IBCLC, aka lactation consultant, that's me, I'm your lactation consultant right now, wants you to know. So I'm going to give you some little things to make sure you have in there that I think are going to be really beneficial for you. I do want to specify that this video is mostly for people that are birthing in the U.S. I am in the U.S. So things may be different in other countries, but I can only speak from my experience. So definitely seek out your healthcare provider for exactly what you should pack. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive right into my journal and we'll go through the list of topics, um, through the list of items that I think are essential for you. So the first one, and these are in no particular order. The first one is a comfortable robe, okay? A comfortable robe and a nursing bra. You don't know how many times I've seen mommies, they have on, you know, just a regular shirt, something like this, and they have to pull it down, stretch it up, pull the pull the bottom up, and do all of this to get the baby on the breast. Um, also, they'll have on a regular bra sometimes and they have to take off their entire bra to feed the baby. It's just kind of inconvenient. If at all possible, bring yourself a nice comfy robe. Number one, you're not home. You're in an environment that is unfamiliar to you. So try to bring little things that make you feel cozy and make you feel like yourself, like a nice, you know, cozy, silky robe. And that way, when you're feeding baby, all you need to do is undo your robe in the front and you can just plop baby right on. And if you have your nursing bra under there, because I know a lot of women like to have support, um, but if you have your nursing bra on, all you have to do is open your robe, unclick your nursing bra, and boom, your, your breasts are available for baby as soon as baby is ready to eat. The next thing I want y'all to bring is a nipple butter. Your hospital may have some type of nipple butter or lanolin cream. If you have um, a specific cream in mind, it's definitely fine for you to bring your own. Lanolin is a byproduct from sheep. Some type of way they, they use the oil from some part of the sheep to create this cream. And it works really well to lubricate the nipples and soothe sore nipples, but some people have um, certain lifestyle criteria. So if that doesn't fit with your lifestyle, you can definitely buy your own nipple butter and have that with you. There's all types of nipple butters out there that you can get from like Walmart or Target, and it doesn't hurt to bring something like that with you to be prepared. Now, with that being said, nipple butters, are not a remedy for a improper latch. Ideally, you want the baby to be latching on deeply onto your breast. That makes breastfeeding more comfortable. Breastfeeding should not hurt, it should be comfortable. I mean, you, you will feel your nipples being tugged and you may have some sensitivity um, in the beginning just because the sensation may be unfamiliar to you or you might have some nipple tenderness or breast tenderness that can be due to hormonal things. 
But as far as the baby latching onto your breast, ideally we want the latch to be comfortable. So if you're having trouble getting the baby to latch on comfortably, definitely hit your call button, ask for help. Um, find out if your hospital has a lactation consultant available to help you. Um, the nurses are also there to help you. So when in doubt, just don't think you're there by yourself. Hit your call button, ask for help, use your resources. But yeah, you can definitely put a nipple butter in your bag. That will be helpful. Another thing that you can add to your bag are um, some type of log book for your baby. I have my log book here. You don't have to get this log book, but I do feel like this one is pretty good. Um, babies pee, poop all the time. You want to keep track of baby's pees and poops because that's a sign that baby is receiving nutrition from the breast if you're breastfeeding and bottle feeding too. It's, it's important for us to keep track of the pees and the poops and all of the feedings. And they feed frequently. They're feeding every one to three hours, sometimes sooner. So um, having something where you can jot down the time of the peas and the poops and the feedings and which breast the baby fed on right versus left, because it's important for you to alternate your breasts. That way both breasts get stimulated to help support your milk supply coming in nice and full the way that it should. Um, all these things after having a whole baby and being sleep deprived and, um, you know, being there for a couple days, you can get a little confused and mixed up. So it, it, it's helpful to have a tool to help you keep track of all of these things, such as a feeding log. Here's my book right here. I created this book specifically for my new mommies, breastfeeding mommies, formula feeding mommies. It doesn't matter. Everyone needs to keep track of their baby's input and output. And in here, I have a couple tips that are really good to know about lactation and breastfeeding. And also there's basically different slots where you can write how long the baby fed on which breast or how much volume the baby took if you're doing bottles. And you can also chart on there the amount of peas in the poop. So it's just something that can keep you um, oriented and on track. You don't have to, of course, get my book, but there's all different types of tools out there that you can find. Some people use apps on their phones. It's really up to you, but I would definitely encourage you to get some type of feeding log book or diaper log book that can help you keep track of those things. The next thing that I would suggest that you bring, this is something that I have people ask for all the time. Your hospital may carry it, they may not. It doesn't hurt to bring your own belly binder. So many times after moms have the baby, I hear them asking if we have belly binders. And at my hospital, it's something that we don't carry, we don't stock on the floor. It's something we have to order, so it's not that convenient to get it. But a belly binder, um, just gives you a little bit more support around the midsection. After you have a baby, some moms report that they just feel loose there. So having something to kind of just snatch them in helps them to feel better. Now, you don't want to have anything too tight. I'm not talking about a corset or anything like that. It's almost like wearing um, Spanx but it goes up and it's, it comes over the belly area and just gives you a little bit more support. So that's, I hear that asked for frequently. So that can be something that you can definitely add to your hospital bag. This is really simple, but it's essential, okay? After you've been in labor, you've probably been breathing hard. You had, um, you know, labored breathing. Your lips might be dry please bring some chapstick. Our hospital, the hospital that I work for, unfortunately, we don't routinely have chapstick stocked on our floor. And it's something so small, but that can make a huge difference in your life because everyone knows that dry chap lips are uncomfortable. So just put a stick in your bag. Another thing that you want to bring will be some slippers. So I never encourage people to walk around their hospital room with no shoes. Granted, they should be cleaning the rooms properly in between patients, but it's just something about the hospital floor. I wouldn't want to put my bare feet on the floor, so I would definitely encourage you to bring some house 
um, shoes or slippers for you to wear while you're in your room. And then let's see what else. Oh, a cell phone charger. Okay. So many times I have moms coming up to the nurse's station, dads coming up to the nurse's station because they forgot their cell phone charger and they're asking, you know, do you have one? Do you have an iPhone charger? Do you have this, that? Make sure you bring your cell phone charger. You're going to be there for a couple of days. Yes, the hospital probably has a phone in your room that you can use, but who remembers anybody's numbers these days? So just go ahead, do yourself a favor and buy an extra charger to throw in your hospital bag. And then the last thing that I'll say is bring yourself a nice comfortable pillow and a blanket. The hospital is often really cold and sometimes blankets and pillows are a little scarce. So in order for you to be comfortable and uh, as cozy as possible in this in environment that is outside of your home, I would encourage you to bring a little blanket so that you can snuggle up and a pillow. Now all of the basics should be covered by your hospital so you don't really have to worry about bringing diapers if you're um, going to be formula feeding you don't have to worry about bringing your own formula um, pads for mom like sanitary napkins we have those huge peri pads for mom will be at the hospital tux pads which is like a little soothing healing pad that you can put in your peri area after you have a baby it's soothing and healing to the skin down below uh, so it's really nice for moms to have after having a baby. Um, baby's wipes, uh, little shirts for the baby, blankets for the baby, all those things the hospital has. The hospital should also have a breast pump, so you shouldn't have to um, bring your own. With pumping, if you're going to be breastfeeding, I would encourage you to hold off on pumping unless it's medically necessary and really focus on um, putting the baby to the breast as often as the baby wants it. The more the baby feeds, the more your milk supply should begin increasing as the days go on. And when it comes to pumping, in the beginning, if you were to pump, you probably wouldn't get much milk out anyways because the first milk that a woman's body makes is very thick and sticky. We call it colostrum. And the pump has a hard time at removing it effectively, but your baby, as long as baby is able to latch onto your breast well, the baby should be able to remove your colostrum. So those first couple of days, as much as possible, unless there is some type of medical reason, I would encourage you to offer your breasts on demand for your baby. That's gonna help support your milk supply coming in nice and full. So that about wraps up this video. I don't wanna make it too long. I hope that y'all um, found it helpful and um, I hope this helps you when it comes to thinking about some things that you need to pack when you are preparing your hospital bag. So with that being said, um, thank you so much for watching. If you like my channel, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe if you wanna see more content from me. I will be making more content for my moms and my mommies to be periodically throughout the year because this is just, um, I, I really love this population. I love working with moms and babies. I love being a lactation consultant. I love that I have experience as a labor and delivery nurse. I just, yeah, I love everything about this. So definitely more videos for y'all are coming in the future. Um, if you have suggestions for me for upcoming videos, definitely let me know in the comments below. And that's about it. So I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. Till next time, I'm your girl Brittany and I'm out.